Hi everybody, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Success Weekly Webinar. And it's very special today because I am celebrating with my dear friends uh, my birthday with you. So thank you so much. And uh, can, can we have, uh, can we just, uh, you know, I'm not going to introduce them right now, but maybe along the way we're going to tell them. They are, and, and if you look at their faces, they are, uh, they were once upon a time guests here in Success Weekly. They were able to share their life. They were able to share their business. And I pray that today you will be inspired. So this is not just fun, you know, having fun together, but actually it will really help you and equip you. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have some time where we can answer some questions. So some video questions were sent to us and we will be showing the question to you and then I'll be able to answer them. And not only me, but I'm going to ask my friends to also answer their questions. So how are you guys? How's everybody? So we, we're really, really thankful that you're joining us. Once again, it's my, my heartfelt gratitude sending to you because, I mean, you can do all sorts of crazy other stuff, you know, like uh, going mauling or watching something or playing games. But you've chosen to be here uh, right now watching Success Weekly. So if you have any questions, please do send them over, like uh, write them down in the comment section. And use the hashtag, uh, ask Bo. Okay, so that's, that's a hashtag, ask Bo, uh, when you do ask your question. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have for you. You know what, just, just before, we, before we show our first video question, what's the whole like, philosophy behind uh, Success Weekly? We want to help you grow in your success in every area of your life. Now, you know me that my focus are two very important things, your spiritual life and your financial life, especially because of the Truly Rich Club, which is the sponsor of our show. Uh, we want you, I want you to grow in your success, in your spiritual life and in your financial life. Why spiritual life? Because that's the foundation of every area of your life. I mean, think about it. It's the foundation. So. Even if you have a great financial life or a great, uh, let's say, health, you know, you're, you're a health buff and all that. But if your spiritual life is not in order, it's going to shatter and you're going to break. And so we want you, your faith, your, your relationship with God, you know, your, your ability to love God and love others. That, that's the foundation. So we want to strengthen that. And then also in the practical area on your financial life. So we want you, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about, I, I really believe this, that, that I wrote an article about this just very recently, that, you know, the biggest reason why people lose money uh, is ego. Uh, that, that's, it's, once upon a time, I thought it was ignorance. Once upon a time, I thought, you know, okay, people lose money and, and they become poor or they never become rich because... Uh, it's ignorance. They, they don't know how money works. And that's true. I, I mean, I, I, I still believe in that. But it's not the number one reason. The number one reason is ego. And we're, we're, we're going to share that to you uh, in the next Success Weekly webinars. Uh, wh why ego? Well, uh, first reason is we spend much more than we earn. And that's why do we do that? Because of ego. Because of pride. And, and that's why I'm, I'm going to say that again. The foundation of your spiritual life is your, is your the foundation of your life is your spiritual life. That, that's, that's so crucial. So welcome again to Success Weekly Webinar. I want you to pass this on, like, like share this webinar to your friends. And we tell them we've just started. We're about to begin. And uh, by the way, we, we're going to raffle a few, a few fun prizes. Uh, the prizes come from my friends because they have their own small businesses. And so they'll be, we'll be raffling some of their products and uh, just for fun. You know, we, we want this night to be memorable uh, since it's our birthday, uh, my birthday celebration. So sharing that to you, um, really, really excited. And thank you so much. So we're going to show our first uh, video asking me a question. And then let's see if we can... Uh, you're going to learn from this question. 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Hi, Brother Bo. This is Lex. First off, a very happy birthday to you. You have uh, been a big inspiration to our family, not only in a spiritual way, but also in the business side. And uh, yeah, we have a big question for you. And uh, here it goes. Uh, how can you manage a family business without compromising uh, your good, harmonious relationship uh, with your family? Uh, I hope you can help us. Uh, I know you will enlighten us. And uh, God bless you always, Brother Bo. And we love you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lex. Thank, Thank you, you so you much. So much. Uh, your question is about the family business. So there are people watching right now. They have a, they have a family business. And sometimes, you know, you, you, don't, you don't see eye to eye. And so you've got all sorts of conflicts. There are some of you, you want to set up your own business and you want to do it with a sibling, a brother, a sister, a, a, a father-in-law, mother-in-law, you know. What's the dynamics? So yes, I totally agree, Lex, that it's difficult. There are certain challenges when you, when you have a family business. And I'm going to ask some people here because some of them may have that this is the same experience. But here's, here's my, my first answer, that think about it. When you, have a, when you have a business within a family, you have to be very clear from the very onset what's most important. Is it money or is it relationship? You, you've got to define that from the start. Because if you don't define that, and then the values will be conflicting. So you've got to set up a meeting with all those concerned, and then you've got to make a decision and, and together say, look, what is most important? Is it our relationships as a family or is it the money? Because if it's the family, we are willing to give up the, the, the money. You know, there are, there are certain situations I know where families make a decision. Look, we've tried it before. We fought. Let's not have a business together. Let's just be first siblings or let's just be first family and not have a business. Because I'd rather that, that and, and there are some families who do this, they would rather, you know, be able to keep the family relationship and just give up on the business because they don't want to end up in court. You know, or they don't want to end up, you know, like like seven years not talking to one another because they feel that the other person was unfair, etc. So you've got to make those choices. Now, are there great families that have that, that have good businesses? Absolutely. So number one, be clear with your values. Like what's number one? Here's number two. There's and and one of my mentors told me this. I'm going to share that that very very important wisdom that he gave to me that there can only be one tiger on top of a mountain. Uh, two tigers won't work. <laughs> there's got to be one boss. There's, there's got to be one, one person in charge of the business. And, and uh, everybody respects him. Everybody agrees that that person is the one in charge. Because if you have that in a family business, then a little bit better. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so much better. Of course, as the years go by, the, that, that top person, that tiger in the mountain will have to obviously get a successor, obviously have a have a team. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, that the tiger doesn't listen to other people. No, of course not. He should be, that's leadership. That's basic leadership that you listen to the, to the input of other people. But, but it has to be clear to everybody that that's the person in authority. Uh, there are other answers I, I'd like to share, but that there might be some people from my friends here who'd like to grab a microphone. If, if there is a family business, uh, Andrew, you, you want to, you, you have a family business. <laughs> Uh, Your father, uh, Andrew, was uh, no. He, you all know it was you who, who headed, who started the business, right? Actually, brother, Bo, it's my. It was my father and I who started the business. Right, right. So, well, we, when we started, did it work? Yeah, it's still, <laughs> I, it's still there. I think, so. I think it's still there. No, but um, yeah, definitely, I've had a lot of experiences because when coming, especially coming from a Filipino Chinese background, yeah, there's a lot of issues that you know the you, the son is supposed to go into the business yes. and eventually take over. So in my case, uh, just like what, what we, we shared in the interview before, it's like we're lucky enough to be, we're not the the eldest. Yeah. My wife and I, Michelle, we're not the eldest. So we're not um, obliged to join our major main family businesses. Yes. So for this business, it's like a secondary business for my father. Yeah. And uh, he put us in charge of it. Yeah. But he's still there. He goes in maybe three times a week okay. just to... Um, go over the finances and because he's a, he's, he's um, already a senior citizen. Yeah. So like you you always say, brother Bo, when you're when you retire, you don't really want to retire yep. everything. Yeah. You want to keep your mind working. So I think that's, that's what he's doing. Yeah. But the day to day operations, he leaves it up to us. Yeah. So there's a lot of trust. 
Yes. Absolutely. Is, yeah. So important. And like you said, there's one tiger on top of the, the yeah. mountain. So right now it's my father, of course. Yeah. Um, whatever decision, major decision he has, yeah. I, I definitely respect it because everything I, I know now, I, a lot of it comes from him. Yeah. So, but eventually, of course, I have my ideas. Yeah. But I'm just lucky enough that but, but my father gives me the opportunity to, you know, go make, make, make your mistake if you want to make a mistake or Woo-hoo! try it out and maybe who knows. Yeah. It might lead to something bigger. Wow. You know what? Uh, you know, in your answer, I, and something I want to share with, with everybody, sometimes people think that the, 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 the principles of leadership change when it's a family and when it's not a family. No, it's the same. The same leadership principles. Uh, how, how do you know if you're a good leader? Think about it. it it's really the ability to, to, to uh, trust somebody and say, look, um, I'm, I want you to make mistakes. You know, that, that ability. I've, I've seen so many bosses who don't do that. And, uh, and therefore, what happens is the organization is uh, not able to grow. But thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for that answer. Wonderful. Anyone else? Anyone else? So there, just uh, grab a microphone if you need to talk. All right. You, you want somebody? Yes, please. Oh, Edwin. Yeah, you know, I made a mistake. I called him Edison. Uh, but, but he's not Edison. He's Edwin Nerison. But, uh, but that was so funny. I was, like, I wish we could capture that on video and show it to you, the, the, the bloopers. Anyway, um, Edison. I share ko lang sa relationship namin magkapatid. Nung nag-start ako ng kasaba kasi, ako lang mag so, bali, one, uh, bali ako lahat, uh, gumagawa. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, bring the microphone closer to your mouth. Okay. So, dahil ako nagsimula ng, ano, ng, nagsimula ng, ano, ng pag uh, puputap ng business ng kasaba, nung time na luma, uma, ano, uh, lumala, uh, umaano yung panahon na, kailangan ko nang ano kailangan ko nang magkaroon ng kasama itong younger sister ko siya yung lumang siya uh, inano ko siya uh, na gusto niyang mag-work sa akin kasi wala rin siyang trabaho noon kaya yun that time kasi wala uh, uh, ayaw ko muna kumuha ng ano dahil ayaw ko muna kumuha ng empleyado dahil ano dahil medyo kulang sa resources so ah uh, para lang ma- ma- ma-maximize yung resources, sabi ko, pwede, pwede mo nang tulungan mo muna ako. Tapos, uh, kapag okay na tayo, sabi ko, uh, pwede uh, i- i-ano kita ng ano, ng, pwede tayo mag-separate din. Magtatayo tayo ng uh, kasabakik business mo rin. Edwin has a very different way and, and which I appreciate that there is no one way of having a great family business. So his formula would be different, uh, let's say, compared to Andrew. Andrew, you've got these uh, 600 stores selling donuts, and it's in one company with your, with your father being, being, being still there, yes? yes? So here, Edwin's uh, situation is different, where he asks each of his siblings to run their own uh, separate yeah. store. So that's another way of doing it. There's, there's many ways to skin a cat. I, I hate that, that <laughs> idiom, skin a cat, my gosh. But, but there are many ways. There are many ways of uh, wrapping a gift. <laughs> there are many ways of doing things. So, so Ed, Edwin has, has a very, very good way of doing it. Yung time na medyo okay na ako, sabi ko, at the same time na alam kong na natutuwa na rin niya yung pagninegosyo ng kasaba, Sabi ko, you can put up your own store and then I will support yeah. you. Now, uh, today I have 14, uh, 14 stores. 14 stores of selling cassava. My younger sister, Raquel Nerison, uh, have uh, seven stores in, seven. in San Pedro Laguna. In wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I think, sabi ko nga, hindi mo, ma- hindi mo ma- kailangan uh, suluhin yung blessing. Yeah. Okay, Edwin, you know why that works? I'll tell you why. Because you're generous. You're selfless. You, it's not about the money. That, that's the reason why it works. That's the reason also why Andrew's business works. 
is because there's a lot of generosity, a lot of selflessness, a lot of trust. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's values. That's why we're saying the spiritual life is the foundation of every area of your life. I mean, if you live a, with, with, with that kind of... I mean, Edwin, what, what you're sharing now, it's a, it's a reflection that I've been having because I'm, I'm preparing a message uh, for two Sundays from now at the feast. You're, you're, you have what I call, uh, I have a word for it. It's uh, irrational kindness. It's, uh, but it's, it, <laughs> irrational kindness, I believe, will, will save the world. The, the cross of Jesus is irrational, is, is the irrational kindness of God. In a family business like that, you just decided, you know, you could be selfish and say, no, sister, that's mine. That store is mine and all those seven stores are mine. You should, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I help you, I started you, but, but no, you're saying, no, that's yours and uh, I'll help you. And that's, that's what you still do. You know, you still help your, your, your uh, siblings. So, amazing. So, Lex, I hope we answered your question. And uh, we have to move on because there's, there are other questions. Uh, thank you, Lex, for that question. And thank you for your greeting. Thank you so much. He, he, Lex serves in the feast. Uh, God bless you. Next question. From. From. Question, Brother Bo. And thank you so much. I'm a big fan of yours in your show, in YouTube, Full Tank. And thank you so much for being an inspirational person to us. And Hoping you, you all the best in life and your family and all your organization. Thank you and have a wonderful birthday. Bye. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Brother Bo Sanchez. And thank you um, for God give you life. And you're so very inspirational to me and all the people. Salamat, Brother Bo. Um, wish you all the best in life. Sana si God give you a wonderful moment sa buhay mo. And brother, I have a question. Paano mo mo lalaman to true love na yan? How to find true love? Kasi ako, brother, bo, iniiwan na lang ako palagi ng mga girl lalo eh. And now, I want to ask you, how to find a true love? And ano yung mga sign na binibigay ni God sa atin na itong certain woman or a girl na siya na para sa'yo? And hope to to answer my question, Brother Bo, and thank you so much. I'm a big fan of yours in your show, in YouTube, Full Tank, and thank you so much for being an inspirational person to us and hoping you, you all the best in life and your family and all your organization. Thank you and have a wonderful birthday. Bye. <laughs> Jojo, I love, I love looking at your face. I, I don't know, you, you're, you're just so funny. You know, you're, you're bubbling. So thank you so much for that question. You are called Jojo the Love Survivor. What a wonderful title, the Love Survivor. So I know you've got a history and you're also a, one, of the, one of the regulars in a radio program. And uh, congratulations for that. So to your question, and I think it's a question of many people. So it's a non-finance question, but that's fine. That's fine. I, 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 as I said, I just want to help every person in every area of their life. So it's a love question. <laughs> uh, how will you know your one true love? And uh, does God give signs? That's, that's your wonderful question. So here's my answer. Do not over-spiritualize the whole search for your one true love. That's, that's a problem. Like if I preach and teach in the Philippine setting where people are religious, that's the fault. Of, of a lot of people. We over-spiritualize it. If I go to another country and I give this uh, talk on finding your one true love, it may not be over-spiritualizing. Maybe their fault will be uh, being superstitious, you know, but, but it's almost like the same thing. Basically, it's this. When you start looking for your one true love, please think of the natural signs instead of looking for the supernatural signs. Meaning to say, you know, over spiritualizing means, Lord God, if, uh, you know, how, Lord, if this woman is really for me, uh, when I see her this afternoon, um, let a butterfly land in her left shoulder, you know, uh, Lord God, if this guy is for me, Lord, uh, he, he will give me a, a pink rose. 
Yes, Lord. I, and, 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 you know, so we, we ask for these supernatural signs without first looking for the natural signs. What are the natural signs? The natural signs are character. You, you marry somebody with character, somebody with integrity, somebody with honesty, somebody with a sense of responsibility, somebody who is kind, somebody who is good, somebody who loves his parents, somebody, I mean, that, that character, that's number one. So I don't care if there are a hundred butterflies that land on the left shoulder. I don't care if the guy gives you 120 uh, bouquets of, of pink roses and, and you say, yay, my, my, you know, but then you find out that that guy is an addict, that guy is, no, you look for the natural signs, look for character. And, and I will always, uh, Jojo, very important to write down your uh, criteria for looking for your one true love. So I, I say this to all the women, you know, if you're looking for your one true love, uh, please use the same care, the same scrutiny, the same analysis that you use when you buy your shoes. Because many women don't. They, they look for their one true love very flippantly. They just look for whatever will make their heart palpitate. And if they see their the palpitations uh, fast, they, 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 they just automatically say, yes, this is the guy. No, you don't. Uh, if, you, if you choose your shoes, you, you, you look for it, and then you, you look for the other pair, you look for the other pair, you go to another store, you ask people, you know, how, how's, my, how's this shoe, and so on. So that's very, I, I will always recommend that to you, Jojo. And, and, and yes, it's, uh, when, when you're able to look for character, um, you're in safe ground. Um, that, that will make it. And then pray. And then ask God to continue to guide and lead you. So, God bless you, Jojo. You are you are a uh, the love survivor, and uh, you will become the love champion uh, when you find your one true love. Thank you so much for your greeting, Jojo. Next question, unless someone else wants to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> okay, next question. Hi, Brother Bo. My question is regarding financial decisions. How can you tell if the decisions you're making regarding your finances are spiritually sound and in accordance with God's plan? All right. Yes, Bea. Uh, I, I like your question. I love it because you are saying that w that business and finances should really be doing God's will. I, I love your question. You're presupposing many people don't do that. <laughs> they separate their lives, you know, Sundays for God, Monday to Saturdays for for me, and uh, you know, when when it comes to church, okay, that's for the Lord. But for for my money, hello, you know, uh, God is off limits here. I, so I love your question, and your question is, how will I know? Here's the thing, you've got to put God as the center of every area of your life, including your money. So is God the center of your money? Second thing, you, you've got to make him your purpose. So why are you earning money? So I pray that you're earning money to do his will. And uh, the two greatest commandments are love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your money. <laughs> oh, that's not in the Bible, but that's what it means, right? Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your money. And uh, so with all your financial decisions. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. So make your money your servant. Don't make it your master. When, if you're able to do that, if love rules your financial life, if God is the center of your financial life, you'll be okay. Uh, you'll be able to follow God. Any thoughts, guys? You're so quiet. Uh, just grab a microphone if you if you have any if you want to share or or speak. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> This is Attorney Tina. She shared in one of our success weekly webinars that, that from a lawyer, she has a store in the wet market, but she's doing so well and helping a lot of people. All right. Um, 
Nine-nervyous ako. <laughs> Ay, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, happy birthday, brother Bo. Thank you. Um, to answer the question, uh, we must always put into mind that we are just temporary sojourners here on earth. Yes. So whatever we earn, it's not ours. It's God. So we are just... Um, his managers, and the ones we manage our money the way we earn it, it is uh, a testament that we are entrusted by God, his re- by His riches. So, ako kasi, um, simple lang yung aking patakaran sa buhay ko. Um, I always remind myself, if, if I'm earning this much, I follow the rule of tithes. So, Galing. My oh, my my strategy is I want to follow Brother Bo's uh, teachings of doing reverse tithing. So someday I know I will do our, my reverse tithing. Because uh, I'm just temporary here or not. So kaya lahat ng kaya ko ibigay, I always give it as much as I can. Thank you. So yun yung guide ko in earning money. Always the spiritual way. I hope I answered the question. Absolutely. So Tino was talking about about tithing, and I will totally recommend that. So uh, Bea, that's number one. You you show to God that He is number one. He's the center of your finances by tithing, and that's uh, start with ten percent. If uh, you know, challenge yourself and say, okay, I'm going to give ten percent of my income to the Lord. And there's no black and white here. Like, is it gross? Is it net? You know, I mean, that, that that's that's all all heart. You you decide based on your heart and give to the Lord. And she said, talking about reverse tithing. What is that? That's that's one day, like having a goal that you're gonna increase it from ten percent to eleven percent to fifteen percent to twenty percent. You know, as the years go by, as God prospers you, you can give more, and then maybe have a goal. It was uh, Rick Warren, uh, the best-selling author of uh, The Purpose Driven Life. He said that he started with 10%, but each year he would increase it to 11, 12, 13. Now he said that he's already in, in, the, in almost 90%. It's crazy. Um, but, you know, such a... And he said, the Lord has been so good. So I, I don't need all the, the, the blessings the financial blessings he gives me, and I, I just share it to other people. So uh, that's a wonderful goal to have. Amen. Let's have another question. Hi, Brother Bo Sanchez. I want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. Um, uh, but always remember, no? Uh, I don't know how to remember. May tanong ako sa'yo, Brother Bo. Kasi medyo pinagdadaanan ako ngayon, no? Ano ang uh, mas mahirap? Mag-hold on o mag-let go? Thank you, and I hope we kiss you. Sam, thank you so much for gracing our show. Thank you for sending your video. I, I know that you've got a lot of followers, so... Uh, Wonderful. It's just an honor for you to send your question. Should you let go or should you hold on? You know, at the end of the day, you want to ask the question, and, and I'm sure this is a question that many people are, ans- are asking right now. The bottom line is, uh, does the person that, whether that be your boyfriend, girlfriend, or whoever in your life, you know, if that person is able to make you a better person because of that relationship, so if that person is making you a better better person, adding to your life, uh, then of, by all means, of course, you, you want to hold on. But who, who's that person that you should let go? If that person that you're relating with, that person is not making you a better person. And uh, it, it's, I know it's a general answer, but, but that, that's the basic perspective. The basic perspective is you want to differentiate between love and need. And I, I always talk about this because so many people are confused. Uh, you, you listen to romantic songs and, and they're, they're confused. They don't know what love and need is. Love is, I desire your well-being. I do not have to be with you because I'm happy as I am. 
I'm very fulfilled as a human being. I do not need to be with you, but I choose to be with you. That's very, very different from need. Need is, I cannot live without you. I cannot breathe without you. You see, it's, you, 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 these are romantic songs. But that's need. That's codependence. That's not love. So that you need to know that. So very, very important to hold on to the person. To, it means you've chosen to be there, not because you need the person, but because you really love the person. I hope I answered your question, Sam, but thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, any, 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 anyone who wants to share anything? Um, all of a sudden, you're love experts. <laughs> okay, there's a, there's a question here online. Um, so uh, 